As it stands today, Boeing and Airbus have 30 distinct commercial aircraft that are currently in production or in development, each with its own unique name. For seasoned aviation experts, the differences between, say, an A321XLR and an A330-800neo might be obvious. But for many people, these long strings of numbers and letters that comprise an airplane's name can be confusing. So why are airplanes named like they are? And what do these long strings of numbers and letters actually tell us about the plane? Let me explain. Before getting into the video, I want to make the point that we will only be looking at the naming schemes of Boeing and Airbus, who comprise 91% of the commercial aviation market. While other manufacturers might vary from these conventions, for simplicity's sake, we'll only be looking at these two. Right off the bat, we need to understand three key terms that will help us understand airplane naming conventions. The manufacturer, the family, and the variant. An aircraft manufacturer is the company that designs, builds, and sells the airplanes. Usually that's either Boeing or Airbus. Each manufacturer develops aircraft families, which are a collection of a few planes that are very similar to one another, but very different to planes in other aircraft families. Variants within the same family look nearly identical to each other and share the majority of the same components, but differ slightly in range and capacity. For those visual learners out there, let's look at an example of how all of these terms are interconnected. Boeing, an airplane manufacturer, builds the 787 airplane family, and within the airplane family are three distinct variants, the 787-8, and Dash 10. Now, if we start at the top of this hierarchy and work our way down, we'll first want to be able to identify which planes are manufactured by Boeing and which are manufactured by Airbus. Well, when you look at a list of all Airbus and Boeing aircraft families, it becomes pretty obvious. All Boeing jets start and end with a 7, while all Airbus jets start with a 3. Now, there is one exception to this rule. You may have noticed that there is one Airbus jet that starts with a 2 rather than a 3. That plane is the Airbus A220, and it wasn't actually designed by Airbus. Rather, it was designed by Canadian manufacturer Bombardier and was originally called the C-Series before Airbus acquired the program and rebranded it. Because it was acquired and not designed in-house, the plane doesn't fall into the typical Airbus naming conventions. Now, once you've identified the manufacturer, the next step is to identify which aircraft family the plane belongs to. For both Boeing and Airbus jets, the aircraft family is dictated by the middle number. For instance, the 737 and 747 are different aircraft families, as are the A320 and A380. Now, a common misconception is the higher this middle number, the larger the airplane family. A quick glance at the 747 and 757 prove this wrong. All 747 family members are considerably larger than the 757. What this middle number actually dictates is how new the aircraft family is. Barring a few exceptions, the larger this middle number is, the more recently the airplane family was developed. But if you've ever looked at the safety card in the seat back pocket, you'll often notice that there is another number usually attached to this aircraft family identifier. For instance, this A350 safety card has a Dash 900 attached to it. This number tells you which specific airplane variant you're on. Now, these variant tags can be a little bit tricky in that they can represent a couple of different things. A good rule of thumb, though, is that the larger this number, the more passengers the variant can carry. For instance, the A350-900 carries 320 passengers on average, while the A350-1000 carries 380. Additionally, these variant tags will sometimes come with a few letters attached at the end. A good rule of thumb here is that if the last letter is an R, it's a range identifier, meaning that the plane has a longer range than its counterparts. 
For instance, the 777-300ER has a longer range than the 777-300, while still carrying the same number of passengers. Now I want to stress that this is just a general outline to help you understand which planes are which. There are, of course, exceptions to these rules. If you have any questions with any oddities or irregularities that you come across, or if you're still confused, leave a comment down below and I will try to address everyone's questions. If you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.